Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the SC Azula 2. So there's been a lot of reviews on this knife from the standpoint of survival and EDC. And while I think this knife is generally a pretty squared away knife when it comes to those, and I'm not gonna to try to add my points or opinions on this knife from either standpoint, even though I do EDC this knife quite frequently, I'm gonna be talking about this knife from a bushcrafter standpoint. And the primary reason I want to do that is if you've been around this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I love my Mora Eldris, and I've compared the Mora Eldris to this knife on quite a few occasions, saying that the Eldris is essentially the SE Azula killer. And while I largely think that that sentiment is still true, if you are looking for a budget knife that can do most of what this knife can do, this knife still does offer some value to people who are willing to go the distance and spend the extra money. Now, I will say this knife is over double the cost of a base uh, Mora Eldris, so, so ultimately while the Mora Eldris and the Essie Azula are in a similar range or they're targeted to a similar group of individuals, people looking for a very sturdy, very robust, and very useful small neck knife, I do think that the SC Azula is a little bit different in the way that it does its thing. And that's primarily due to the differing uh, grinds. When you look at the Mora Eldris, it is a, uh, it's a Scandinavian grind that's a little bit modified on the belly to give it a relief cut so that it can do a little bit better biting. However, I will say that the SC Azula 2 still holds its own very well with its full flat grind it allows it to really bite into wood very deeply. And while I don't think that this knife is perfect for bushcrafting, if you are one of those people that is after the crafting aspect or you're trying to ultimately do more fine detailed work, if you're trying to carve on a piece of wood and you know make an intricate design, or if you're trying to, with expedience, create notches for things like traps or whatever, you know, traps or you're trying to make a pot hanger, you know, this knife is going to serve you very well. And it's going to be a knife that you can pair with a larger bush knife that may not be able to do those tasks with as much ease, or it may be just a little bit too large and it might be an inconvenience. This knife will be able to, like I said, create something like a pot hanger uh, notch very fast, very efficient, and with very few cuts actually. It's very surprising to me how well this knife does perform. So, so ultimately, what I have to say is if you're a bushcrafter and you're looking for a fixed blade companion knife, this might just be what you're looking for. Um, it's one of those knives that's very robust. If you want something that is a very tough, robust knife that you can use in a lot of applications, smaller applications, without fear of it breaking or coming apart at all, because this is very tough. Uh, this is a great knife for that. It is also, like I said, a very great knife for doing detailed work and detailed work and creating intricate designs or doing notches with very few cuts. When I was doing my test and comparison between the Azula, the F, sorry, the Azula, the Eldris, and the Companion, I was very happily surprised that this knife was actually completing notches a few cuts before something like the Eldris or the Companion would. And I, once again, I believe that is due to the fact that the Eldris does have a, at the base of the blade, a purely Scandinavian grind. And when you're trying to push that big wedge through wood, it's just a little bit harder than a very thin, very precise edge. So I think, so ultimately, while I don't think that this knife is substantially better than something like the Eldris, it might just be up your alley, and ultimately, I do like the ergonomics a little bit more. They give you a little bit more space, and you can really hold this knife with a good four-finger, five-finger grip, and it's just a little bit larger than something like the Eldris, so, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to take your own personal needs into consideration, but this really might just be the blade that's better than the Eldris. So, I think it outperforms it just a little bit, but maybe not quite enough to justify the uh, over double the cost. Anyways, guys, hope you've enjoyed this look at the Eldris. I do enjoy it. It's one of those knives that it's not gonna be leaving the collection 
especially with my SCs. It does seem I've sold a lot of knives, but my SCs are always here to stay, and that's because while they may not be the best at everything, the things they do well, they do well, and they're very robust, very tough knives. The Rowan Heat Treat is a very legendary heat treat. You can really run these knives through the ringer, and they keep coming back for more. So that is my base. That's basically all I have to say. Like I said, from a bushcrafting standpoint, I still definitely use it, and I definitely like it.